I would like to acknowledge that this video is being filmed on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to their elders past and present, and extend that respect to any Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander or First Nations people who may be watching this video today. Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome to another picture book recommendation video. I'm trying to do one of these every month so fingers crossed that we will stick to it. I'm starting off with picture book recommendations for back to school. Here in Australia we are going back to school at the end of January, that's when our primary school year starts and we are fingers crossed that something is starting at the end of January because given the state of the world we don't quite know what's going on. But I wanted to share some picture books that I absolutely love for Back to School. This was also prompted because I did receive two wonderful review copies of Back to School picture books that I wanted to talk about in a little bit more depth. And then I also pulled out some of my old favorites and also some new favorites that I have. Now, the one thing that I will say is that picture books have a tendency to anthropomorphize animals and use them to tell stories. And a lot of these have done that, but I've also included some that do feature very realistic situations and settings and characters. So I'm hoping that this is a nice healthy balance. So from Scholastic I received two books. The first one was Zoo School by Heath McKenzie. This one is about some children who go to school, they're running late one day, and when they get to school they find that everything is not quite what it seems. Their school has been taken over by zoo animals and there are animals who are students, there are animals who are teachers, things are just going absolutely crazy and pear-shaped and all the teachers are hiding out in the staff room because I can guarantee you that's where I would be hiding too. It's very fun, it's brightly coloured, highly entertaining, definitely something very visual that the kids would really enjoy. It's also a really good intro introduction to school. It does sort of go through the various places within the school, classrooms and the gym and the staff room and the playground and all of that sort of stuff. So it is very bright, fun and colorful that way. The second book that Scholastic sent me and I'm kind of a dying a little bit inside over this because this author illustrator duo are just one of my favorites. I've talked about so many of their books in the last little while, so you will not be surprised at all that it is The Wild Guide to Starting School by Laura and Philip Bunting. I mean, Philip Bunting's illustrations are just to die for. As I said, this is one of those books that features a lot of animals telling the story. So this is all about various Australian animals going to school for the very first time. And this one is very much more like a guidebook. So, you know, you get welcomed to the school. And then it goes through different stages from waking up in the morning, what do you need to do when you wake up before you go to school, when you get dressed. And that's kind of my favorite one because here in Australia we have school uniforms. So they go through um, what can you wear and what can't you wear. And then it goes through everything from first day feelings to arriving at school to the different places in the school classroom. And it's very humorous and fun. The one thing I would say is I would probably not necessarily read this in one hit with my kids. I do teach four and five year olds. So this is a lot. Of information in one go but I would use it as a jumping off point to talk about different aspects of school so this would be something I would use probably over a week to unpack and actually talk about the similarities with our own school and also what the kids have noticed themselves and how they see our school reflected so this is gorgeous it's just exquisite to look at as I said I'm a Laura and Philip Bunting fangirl while we're on the animals at school train I will continue with those books so there is Possum Goes to School by Melanie Carter and Nicola Aram. This one is hilarious because it's a really good one to get the kids involved in joining in some of the different things that get said in the book because we have a possum that makes its way into the school. So if you're not Australian, uh, you will possibly not know that having a possum inside your school or house or anything like that is not desirable because they just cause absolute havoc. So this possum somehow gets into the school. It ends up running through various parts of the school from the classroom to the library to the canteen to the playground to the sports shed and the whole time the kids are chasing it and they're really excited to see the possum. They're happy to see all the chaos unfolding. Meanwhile all of the adults and the teachers are just like oh no <laughs> everything's gone pear-shaped and it's so fun and funny and a great read aloud just because of the way that the story is told. It's very repetitive. The kids get involved in reading and saying some of the parts out loud. So this one is one I read every year. Another one that I couldn't not include because it features one of my favorite characters is Wombat Goes to School by Jackie French and Bruce Watley. I think I've shared some of the Wombat books before. This is Mothball. Mothball features in many books, including my favorite Diary of a Wombat. But in this one, Wombat decides to go to school. One of her humans is going to school for the first time and Mothball tags along and gets into all sorts of mischief. The signature style of this particular book is it's very, very short sentences. Sometimes they're only one word. 
and they're very funny. Quite often the illustrations are very simple and show the progression of the story. I just adore all of the books featuring Mothball because they're just so funny for me and they're so fun to read out loud as well. Again, this introduces different parts of the school that kids might see, different activities they might take part in and is simple and engaging and just gorgeous. Another one that I found last year that I hadn't heard of before was Maddie's First Day by Penny Matthews and illustrated by Liz Anelli. This one is about Maddie who is starting school for the first time. And now there's a couple of reasons that I really like this one. It's a very you know, similar storyline. It's about a little girl starting school for the first time. She's really nervous. But the things that I like about this, we have a school uniform, which is very common here in government primary schools. You have a lot of conversation around the lead up to starting schools. The first few pages are Maddie and her family preparing for her first day of school and getting everything ready. So it's got that really great background. Okay, what sort of things can you do to get ready at, at home for school and things like that, which is always a huge conversation that I have with my students. On her first day of school, where typically you would always have the mother dropping the child off, we don't. We have Maddie's father dropping her off because he is the stay-at-home parent in this book, which I think is really cool to see. And we see her mother getting ready to go off to work. It also looks like an Australian school might. So you have all the different things that you might see in, Australia, in an Australian school. I love a lot of the American-based picture books about starting school. I have quite a few of them as well. However, when we're talking about making connections and seeing yourself represented on the page, this is what I love to see because this actually looks like our classroom. So there is the connections that we can make. I also just love the illustration style. It's very whimsical and fun too. And the last book that I wanted to recommend is one that is called Starting School. This is by Jane Godwin and illustrated by Anna Walker, who are another dynamite writer author duo. This one again is not a book that I would read from start to finish because a bit like the Philip Bunting book, it is very information heavy. So again, this one has different stages. So getting ready. The first day getting to know people. And these are all things that I would use as conversation starters with my students. And the other thing to note is that we follow five different children and we see how each stage and each new aspect of school that's introduced to them affects each of them individually. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. Even just seeing the different kinds of things that the kids bring for snack time and things like that are really great conversation starters. So I utterly adore this book. It's so good for using in the classroom, but also if you have young kids at home, it's a great way to open up the conversation around school and to do it slowly and through really fun, whimsical images as well. All right, so those are some of my back to school picture book recommendations. In the comments, I would love to know your favorite ones. Please, please, please recommend any more to me down below. As I said, I love actually collecting some of the international titles as well, but I also think it's really, really important that we have these ones that represent the place where we are as well. If you want to let me know that you're here, but you don't want to leave a comment, feel free to leave an Apple emoji down below. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, everyone.